For the first time in the history of the Catholic Church in the United States, people are identifying themselves as ex-Catholics. You've heard the chilling statistic. The second largest Christian denomination in the country today is, guess what? Farmer Catholics. Now, as you know, there was always a large group of lapsed or fallen away Catholics. We always knew that. Maybe some of us were at one time or another. But we also know that Catholics never, ever left their churches, as Jimmy Breslin, the crusty uh, commentator in my new hometown of New York, commented, we Catholics often fall away, but we're only one chest pain away from going back to the church, all right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if that's true anymore, everybody. People, people are now renouncing the church, renouncing membership, and I'm afraid even either leaving all organized religion or joining another. You know me pretty well. You know I'm no chicken little, okay, saying the sky is falling down. And I acknowledge praising God with all the might I can muster that there's a lot of growth in the church, too. You better believe it. In my now home archdiocese in New York last year, 3,000 people, freely, adults, uh, entered the church at the Easter vigil. Uh, prominent people, you read about it all the time, continue to convert to Catholicism. The church is, is still growing, thank God, and the overwhelming majority of Catholics, overwhelming, over 80%, still remain loyal to the faith of their fathers until death. Hallelujah for all of that. Uh -uh, I'm no crepe hanger, but I still got to be realistic in acknowledging that the number one pastoral problem we as Catholics confront today in my book is that more and more people do not see the intrinsic, necessary connection between Jesus and his church. Now, what are we going to do about it? Well, a bunch of stuff we can do about it, and you are doing stuff about it. Can I propose three, and there's more, but can I propose three possible roads that we might take to regain a sense of the mystery, the awe of the church, and the intrinsic connection between Jesus Christ and his church. I'm going to suggest a new model of the church that we might look at. I'm going to ask for renewed apologetics, and I'm going to ask for a recovered sense of repentance in the church, okay? Here's number one. I would like to suggest that we begin to stress a new model of the church, namely the church is my, our spiritual family. Number two, a renewed emphasis on apologetics. You know what apologetics is, everybody? It's the art of credibly, convincingly, and compellingly defending and presenting our faith. Now, I see so many brother priests whom I admire and have such fond and grateful thoughts. I see you out there tonight. You'll back me up on this story because it happens almost every year about this time, all right? Every year about this time, after Sunday Mass, we priests are gonna meet a couple that we know who will come up to us and is gonna tell us the same story. The couple's son or daughter just left and went to college about a month ago, all right? And let me give you my example of how it occurred. They, they come up to me and they say, Cardinal, we're down. We just, we, we sent our boy to Catholic school. We baptized him. He was sent to Catholic school from kindergarten through high school. We never miss Sunday Mass. We take our faith seriously. He went off to college a month ago. We called him this morning, and in our conversation, as good parents do, we asked him if he had been to Sunday Mass, and he said, oh, no, my roommate invited me to his church because we sat up all night last week and he told me how wrong and misguided my Catholic faith is. What did we do wrong, the parents will say to me. And I ask, what do we as a church do wrong? We have failed to equip our young people, ourselves, with the art of credibly, convincingly, and compellingly defending and presenting our beloved faith. That roommate's congregation did not <laughs> he was well up on apologetics. So we need a renewed sense of apologetics. Now, I don't mean 
the combative, arrogant, in-your-face clashes which may have been associated with the apologetical movement of the past. Uh-uh. I mean uh, a humble, cheerful, confident, rational grounding in our Catholic faith. My brothers and sisters, we belong to a church that has survived dungeon, fire, and sword, as that beautiful Irish song goes. And apologetics prepares us to survive a rational criticism of our faith that is all over the place today. We need it more than ever. Uh, are you prepared, am I prepared, to defend our Catholic faith against those who want to take it away from us and our children? They might be classmates of our kids or co-workers or neighbors. They might be editorial page journalists, but they misunderstand the awe and the beauty and the freedom and the truth of our Catholic faith. And are we prepared to engage them, to let them know by the radiance of our words and actions that we cherish our church? We're well aware of its shortcomings, but we're prepared to die and what's more important, live with and for Jesus and his church. That my brothers and sisters, is apologetics, and we need it more than ever. And fi <clears throat>